Welcome to part three of the Infuse Bioelectricity module. As discussed in part two, the laboratory experiment that you'll be doing involves the use of a pulse sensor that contains an LED light source and a photodiode such as the one shown in the figure. Um, once the light from the LED reflects off the blood and tissue in the finger and strikes the photodiode, the light is converted to an electrical current and the photodiode becomes a source. So in a schematic representation, we have a photodiode here and we have light that is uh, hitting the photodiode. Uh, this generates electrons and the electrons lead to an equivalent current, I. <clears throat> Somewhere else in the circuit there will be a load and uh, that load will have a resistance R and from Ohm's law the voltage across that load is given by V equals IR so this is our photodiode here. So in this circuit, uh, once the light hits the photodiode, um, the photodiode then essentially becomes a source of current. And again, the source will send uh, a current through a resistance somewhere else in the circuit. And we can determine the voltage across that resistance or that load using Ohm's law. If in addition to resistors there are capacitors in the pulse sensor circuit, their values will affect how quickly the circuit can react to changes in the photodiode current. So uh, for a capacitor of value C, if we assume that there's a voltage across the capacitor, that's a function of time, then there will be a current it's also a function of time and the relationship between the current and voltage is that the current is equal to the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage with respect to time. So let's assume for now that the V of T versus time um, looks like this. So from T equals 0 to T1 it's changing linearly and then it becomes constant and at the point where it becomes constant it has a value of V1 so uh, for T less than T1 if we say the slope of that line is M then V is equal to M times T and dV dt is just M and for T greater than T1, uh, the voltage is constant, so dV dt is zero. Now if we look to see what the resulting current across the capacitor is, um, up to uh, time T equals T1, the time derivative of the voltage again was M so the current is going to be C times M and after that it drops to zero because the time derivative is zero. Uh, 